Hey, what's up everyone? In this SOLIDWORKS tutorial, we're going to model this plastic injection molded bathroom countertop organizer. Though the part looks relatively simple, it will require a wide array of SOLIDWORKS features and tools, including ruled surfaces, converting surfaces to solid bodies, applying draft, and even doing a drafted cut extrude to create. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button it really helps us out here at Crowtrek Industries with the YouTube algorithm to help our videos get seen. Also be sure to subscribe to get notifications about future videos and leave a comment on a tutorial that you would like me to do in the future. With all that said, let's get started. We're going to start by opening up a new SOLIDWORKS part file, making sure that our units are set to inch pound seconds. and we'll open up a new sketch on the right plane where we'll create our basic profile so we'll go to our line tool and create one vertical line a horizontal line and then a taller vertical line and we'll double click to close out our line tool it's a neat little shortcut in SOLIDWORKS. To connect these two line segments, we're going to use a spline because it'll allow us to curve the line to fit the top contour of our part. So we'll go up to spline and we're just going to do a two-point spline clicking once on each endpoint. Now you can't do the double click to close out the tool like we did with the line segment. So we're just going to hit escape. All right. And we want to set the midpoint of this bottom line to be coincident with our origin. So what we're going to do is right click on it and click select midpoint. Then holding control, we'll select the origin point and select coincident. Now let's start adding some dimensions. We'll set the bottom length to be 10 inches, the tall side to be 5.50 inches, and the shorter end to be 3.75 inches. And we also want to set up the curvature for our spline here. So we'll hit escape and then select our spline tool. And we have these two curvature controls which allow us to adjust the spline. We can adjust the angle as well as the actual curvature here. And we can do that on both sides. But we want the angle to be at 90 degrees here. So we'll select it and then select horizontal. And we'll do the same here. And select horizontal. And as far as the curvature dimension, we're going to select smart dimension again and just click on the control. And that should give us this numeric dimension here, which we will set to be 9.50. And we're going to do that for both of them. 9.50. And we now have a fully defined sketch. So we will exit our sketch and do a midplane extrude. of 6 inches and hit OK and we've started creating our basic uh, body for the part. Now let's create the individual cells for our organizer. We'll do this by creating a new sketch on the bottom face of our part. 
and we'll go normal to, making sure that the shorter end of the part is on our left hand side. And we're just going to create a center line at the midpoint that goes through the origin. And we'll double click, close out the line. And we're going to create a few vertical lines to create our cells. Like so. Alright, now let's add some dimensions to fully define our sketch. So we'll set this distance to be 2.25 inches. This distance will be 5.25 inches. This distance will be 3.50. And last but not least, this one will be 7.25 inches. Alright, so this is our basic outline of where the pockets will go. We'll hit Escape to close out our Smart Dimension tool, and we'll click and drag to highlight over all of the line segments. And we're going to set them to be construction, because what we're going to do here is use the Offset Entities tool to create our individual cells. So we'll hit OK, and then go to our Offset Entities tool. And we will set the distance to be 1 8 or 0.125 inches. And we'll select Bidirectional. And we'll pin it to keep the tool visible. And we're just going to select each line here. Like so. And hit OK. And now we want to select the outer perimeter to offset that inward. So we will set our thickness to be 0.25 inches. And unselect the bidirectional option. And we will reverse our line if it's going on the outside. OK. And hit OK. So it's a little hard to visualize at the moment, but these are our individual pockets, these boxed in regions here. And we're going to use the trimming tool to cut away at the extra line segments. So we'll hit OK to close out our Offset Entities tool and go to Trim Entities. And we're going to use our Power Trim tool, but we're going to select both of these options down here. The first is to keep trimmed entities as construction geometry, which means that as we trim a line, the section that's trimmed will simply just become a construction line. Our second option is to ignore trimming of construction lines. So if we run the trimming tool over an existing construction line, such as this one that runs down the center, it won't trim it, it'll just ignore it. And we're selecting both of these to keep our sketch fully defined as we trim away at our excess lines. So we're just going to go in and cut like that, and you see how the solid lines went to construction. And the construction lines are unaffected. And we're just going to go through and trim away all of these. It's a bit of a rinse and repeat operation here. OK, 
Okay, I think that's all of them. Yep. So now we have our six individual cells. And we'll hit OK. And exit our sketch. So now to create our cells, we need to do an extruded cut. So we'll select our sketch and go up here to extruded cut. And for our direction, we'll select through all. And we'll select through all for our direction. And we'll select offset here which will offset it from our sketch plane. We'll set that distance to be 0.25 inches. See how it's offset it to 0.25 inches downward. We actually want that to be upward, so we'll flip it. And since this will be a plastic injection molded part, we want to add a little draft here. So we'll switch our draft on and we'll keep it set at one degree but if you look at it from the side you see how it's tapering inward as we move up from our cut start face which we don't want we want it to taper outward so we'll check that box and we'll hit OK and we've now made our little pockets Now let's create the lip that runs along the top edge of the part. To do this, we're going to use the Ruled Surfaces command, which can be found on the Surfaces tab. Right here. So we'll select that. And we're going to create a tangent surface. And set our distance to be 0.25 inches and for our edges to select we're just going to select the outer edges of our part and if it goes vertical like that we'll just hit alternate face here to swap it out like so and this is a very quick and easy way to kind of capture this complex curvature here with a single feature. And we will hit OK. Now you see here we have a surface body and a solid body. And we need to merge these two into one single body so we're going to convert the surface into a solid body using the Thicken tool, which is also under the Surfaces tab. And we have a few options here. We can thicken upward. We could do a mid-plane thicken, or thicken both sides. Or we can thicken downward. We'll thicken downward, and we'll set our distance to be 0.1875 inches. And we want to make sure that our Merge Results box here is selected. Otherwise, we'll end up with a multi-body part, which we don't want. So we'll hit OK. and we've successfully modeled our lip. Since this is an injected molded part, we want to add some draft to our outer faces. To do this, we're going to go up to our mold tools and select draft, and we'll do a neutral plane draft with the bottom face being the neutral plane reference and we'll keep the angle at one degree which is also the draft we used for our pockets here and for our faces to draft we're going to select the four primary faces here 
And also, all of the faces for the outer edge of our lip here to draft those as well. And we want to make sure that our direction of pull, which is indicated by this arrow, is downward. And we'll hit OK. And we've now added our draft. The last thing we'll do is set our material. So to do this, we'll select our material from the Feature Manager tree, right-click, and go to Edit Material. And using the standard SolidWorks materials, we'll go to Plastic, and select ABS, and hit Apply. Now it changes the part to a standard white, but if we go over here, to Appearances, Plastic. We're able to change it as we see fit. So you can change it to any color you want. And go with Beige. Alright. This concludes our bathroom countertop organizer modeling tutorial. In future videos, We'll use this model to go over the different individual mold tools used to create the core and cavity tooling to make our part. So be sure to subscribe to get notifications about those when they come out. Also remember to hit the like button if you learned a few things from this tutorial and leave a comment for a tutorial that you would like me to do in the future. I've already gotten a handful of comments with different ideas that I've added to my list. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.